Well, I'm joined tonight by Karen Atia. She is Global Opinions Editor at The Washington Post. And she edited the last piece that Mr. Khashoggi wrote for the newspaper, and she worked with him for the past year. Um, Karen, it's good to have you on the program. Um, we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. We know that um, the last article that Mr. Khashoggi wrote um, and that you edited um, was about freedom of expression in the Arab world. And we know that his opinions were not well received by Saudi authorities. Um, did he ever speak to you about the hatred that was directed at him by the Saudis? Sure. So, you know, obviously, um, when he first when we first sort of found him and uh, last year and he wrote his first piece for us, he expressed to me in, a, in an email saying, um, you know, that it was painful for him to talk about what was happening in Saudi Arabia, that Saudi Arabia was always, you know, a place of, you know, a level of repression, but that it had been um, unbearable or become unbearable for him. And so, you know, the idea that someone who was that close to uh, the royal family um, and was so prominent in Saudi Arabia felt that it was so unsafe that he needed to come here to Washington to live just speaks to, you know, how um, personally sort of under pressure that he, he was feeling. And, you know, as far as our, our conversations, he in particular um, felt uh, uh, sadness and, and depression over particularly um, his family. Uh, the Saudi authorities slapped travel restrictions and bans on his children um, shortly after he began writing for us. And yeah, he, he told me that um, that uh, authorities, um, members of, of the family would reach out to him and say, you know, why are you writing for the Washington Post? You know, you can do what you want, but why are you writing uh, for the Post? So he definitely was facing a lot more scrutiny and pressure for what he was um, writing for us. But he, he said he felt he had to do it. He felt he had no choice, and he, he just wanted to be able to express himself. And let me ask you about what um, has emerged today. There were these video images um, showing what looks like a body double, which suggests that there was an attempt, a premeditated attempt, to cover up the killing of Mr. Khashoggi. When we see that, we know that the international community has no trust in the Saudis coming clean with what happened. Um, we understand that the Turkish president says he will tell the truth about the situation tomorrow. Do you have faith in Turkey to deliver a thorough investigation? Um, and do you even do you have faith in the U.S. administration to do so if Turkey doesn't? Sure. Uh, so I think obviously, you know, the Saudis have completely um, shot or, or destroyed any any hint of credibility. You know, in this in this case, we already knew that there was um, a plot to capture Jamal specifically that U.S. intelligence officials intercepted. You know, as far as um, Turkey's role, um, you know, we're here sitting hoping that they do fully release everything that they have because so far they've put Saudi Arabia on the back foot with leaking um, these details, and at the very least, these details are enough. For the Saudis to sort of have to backtrack and 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 deny and change their story, so you know um, Jamal was uh, was a friend of Erdogan's. His his wife or, or was to be wife, fiance was Turkish. Um, he had contacts within the Turkish government. They knew him, so you know we're hoping that that they will do. Uh, the right thing and and tell the world what happened to our colleague. And as far as the U.S. Um, officials, uh, same thing. You know, uh, CIA officials have seen evidence. We need to press uh, for as much as possible full, you know, answers, full accountability. Um, and it just, whatever we do, sends a message to journalists around the world about whether or not um, regimes can get away with murdering them in cold blood. And whether or not the, you know, the U.S., the leader of the so-called free world, will stand by and and do anything about it. Yeah, well, let me pick up on that. Today in the Columbia Journalism Review, there is an article about uh, Trump and the death of Mr. Khashoggi. And in this, um, the author writes, now we know the truth. Trump could not care less about journalism, which means a dead journalist, or the five who died at the Capitol Gazette newsroom earlier this year in Maryland. It has more or less value to him than anyone else. There is no symbolism here, no greater threat for those of us in 
this business, the situation is more dire than we thought. Has the murder of Mr. Khashoggi, has, has it shown us a U.S. president who doesn't care if someone like me or you is killed because we try to report the truth? It feels that way. I think we, we hope against hope that, you know, luckily it's not just the president who has a say in this. It is also Congress um, imposing consequences in this particular case for, for Saudi Arabia, whether it be human rights sanctions on individuals who are found to be uh, guilty of this or uh, imposing arms sales like, like Germany, ha uh, banning arms sales to, to Saudi Arabia like Germany has and suspending um, suspending those sales. Um, but yeah, it's, it's scary. It's scary to think that if you know, if you or if me or if anyone else, you know, were, were to disappear, um, that, uh, you know, we'd have an administration that would put a price tag on our lives, um, would say that, would question whether or not we were citizens or not, or, or what religious beliefs we had. Um, this case has, sh you know, shockwave level implications for um, the safety and the ability of, of journalists and really anybody with an opinion contrary to those in power, um, it sends a message, you know, what are our lives worth compared to, you know, what we try to do for society, which is try to expose wrongdoings, try to speak about putting our societies and countries on a better path, at least in the way we see it. Um, I think this is a, it's a, it's a real serious test case, and I'm just hoping and praying that, especially the United States, will pass it. All right. Karen Atiyah, with the Washington Post, Post Global Opinions Editor there. Karen, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you.